Hey everyone, it's Dan from Cyrus Reliance. On my channel, we're focused on helping the online money-making community find new and exciting ways to profit using our PCs and our smartphones. Surveys are a great way to make some extra money online, whether that be to earn an income or a side gig like myself. But I think we're all getting tired of getting rejected from surveys for BS reasons after completing five minutes of qualification questions. As that's the case, I've actually developed two different strategies on how you can limit the chance of getting rejected from these different platforms. With these two strategies, I've actually managed to earn over £500 last month from using online surveys. How great is that? I'm really happy with what I achieved. As always, all the sites mentioned in this video are in the description. Let's dive right in. Number one, you need to lie on survey broker sites like Swagbucks, SurveyPop, SurveyJunkie and even QMe. And you may be thinking that is super unethical. But I doubt a CEO of a tech firm will be doing a survey on Swagbucks for 30p. And that's where we come in. We need to be that middleman. We need to be that CEO. And that's what I'm suggesting you do. Somebody has to take control of this situation. And if none of you are prepared to accept that responsibility, then perhaps I should. Before you do any surveys though, I'm gonna suggest you actually make a persona. So an individual called Tommy Loran, an American conservative political commentator, actually stated that the only way to cover up a lie is to keep lying. Politicians have been doing this for years and it's time for us to follow suit and this is the best opportunity we can do to make some sweet money. Here's everything that your persona needs to be. So first off, you need to be in full-time employment. I would suggest putting it down as a high role, such as a supervisor, a director or even a business owner and you need to be aged between 25 and 49. When you're asked about income, you always earn above 50k a year and you are the highest earner in your household. I'm actually just jumping in whilst I'm editing this video. I want to mention, if you're ever asked, have you conducted a survey on a certain topic over the last two weeks, four weeks, six months? Of course you haven't. This, this is a way to remove anybody who's got bias towards certain media. So yeah, always choose no in that regard. Also, in some cases, certain survey providers may be looking for somebody in a certain job role or industry. And in a lot of cases, the survey provider would ask, we're looking for someone who works in XYZ. It could be HR, finance, marketing, anything. When asked, of course you do. And you always choose yes. And then you have to play up to the illusion that you are this individual who works in that certain industry. If the questions are too specific on that industry or role, literally just Google the answers and just give them that. No one's gonna stop you from doing that. And that way you will always qualify for surveys if asked for certain job roles. One big thing to note when doing surveys, you will encounter the question, do you work in this industry? And if you get asked that question, you always suggest none of the above. You do not work in that industry, no matter what it is. When in doubt, always say you work as the head of tech in a software firm. And a lot of the time you will qualify because AI is really popular right now. Finally, if you ever do get asked if you have children, of course you do. And they're aged between three and 10 and 12 and 18. And this is because you can get access to exclusive surveys targeted towards a younger demographic, aka your children. Here's my two kids right now. Well, look how much they look alike. Just remember to keep this persona going on every single survey you do on these survey broker sites. Because if you don't, there is a risk of you getting banned. So if you give inconsistent results on your age, your income, or even your level in your organization. So if you go from director to entry level back to director, it's gonna be a bit of a red flag. So I would always suggest having it wrote down in your notes app on your phone or a sticky note on your computer. And that way you will never forget who you are. Once you've actually got this strategy down, you can just rinse and repeat and make as much money as you want from online surveys. And that's how you do it. Above all else, think like a researcher. Use your inner Jedi mind tricks. I constantly think about what are they trying to achieve from this survey? And then I give them a load of rubbish from that. Number two. Instead of using these survey broker sites like Swagbucks, SurveyPop, or even QMe, just go direct to the different survey providers. Then you won't have to actually lie. You can be yourself and just be super approachable. And that's what you want. For example, I never lie on certain sites such as Prolific, such as OnePoll, YLive, YouGov, MSR, and many others. And the reason why, simply I give them my demographics and who I am and they provide studies based on that information so I don't have to lie and I can qualify based on my personal demographics. How great is that? So now that you know the tips and tricks of doing online surveys, I'm gonna suggest that you do not speed run any surveys on any site other than OnePoll, SurveyPop and Swagbucks. This is because certain sites have like certain triggers and if you speed run certain sites or if you speed through them too quickly, 
You will get instantly disqualified from that survey, even if you actually completed it right. <laughs> and Kumi is notorious for this. So my final tip is, do not go too fast on certain sites until you understand that you're not going to get rejected for BS reasons, such as going through a survey too quick. That is total rubbish. If you do have any further questions on how you can qualify for more surveys, let me know. On screen right now is my two newest videos. I hope you enjoy this one. Dan, the CEO of a tech firm, signing out.